At Christopher Columbus High School, the mission of the Marist Brothers to make Jesus Christ known and loved through the Christian education of youth has been embraced. Over the last 50 years, the school has played an essential role in helping young boys mature into exceptional young men, giving them the opportunity to fulfill their dreams. The word Marist comes from Mary, and the, the love and the concern that she showed Jesus, he wanted that spirit to emanate through the congregation, and I think that's exactly what we tried to do. Christopher Columbus High School opened its doors in Miami, Florida in 1958 with 139 students and two and a half buildings. In 1959, the Marist Brothers Order took over the direction of the school. Well, the reason for, for Columbus was that Archbishop Harley was beginning to build regional high schools following the, the great advance in science, I suppose. Uh, the catalyst was the atomic bomb, and they realized the need for uh, greater scientific uh, endeavors. In the, our schools and our parish high schools were not equipped to do that. So he built cent cent regional high schools. Archbishop Curley in Notre Dame would be in North Miami, and then he built one in South Miami, Columbus. It was opened in 1958. The rallying cry, Adelante, came to symbolize the commitment the audacity of the school. Adelante came because of the concept of Columbus. Uh, we were starting out, we were discouraged, I suppose, somewhat. The Adelante story is the, the situation when they were giving up, uh, getting discouraged in discovering America and Columbus. Encourage them, Adelante, land was in sight. Keep going, keep going forward. It means move forward, it means project towards the future. In my eyes it means, and in my heart it means dream. It means you can achieve what you want. No obstacles, no boundaries. Columbus is a school that is always moving forward. It's assessing the needs of its students, the needs of society, where it should be leading its students to be productive members of society. Columbus prepares you to deal with a world that constantly changes. The moral strength the steadfast determination and the loving kindness of the Marist brothers are the foundation blocks of Christopher Columbus High School. During times that were turbulent, Columbus was a rock. We had so many uh, concerns. We had the, uh, the Vietnam War going on, the whole social experimentation, and, and you felt it here at the school. And it was so important to have a, a moral compass guiding you through those difficult years. And that's one thing that Columbus, I think, instilled in us for life. It, it's really a spirit that has, that has remained very steady in the vast changes that are going on around us. And that's very comforting. Columbus, as it guides its students, provides an environment that nurtures, encourages, and educates. The environment is a nurturing environment. It's one in which the, the teachers, the coaches, the guidance counselors, the administrators, I think we all show that we care about our students here at Columbus, and I think it's reflected back in the happy faces we see in the corridor. The teachers do a great job of that. They, they all care. Uh, there's always people to talk to if you need someone to talk to. Um, every teacher is there after school if you need help. It's a very one-on-one. It's -on -one. You know, you feel like you're being taken care of, and you matter, every individual matters. Columbus encourages spiritual growth. The environment guides young men down the path of Christianity. And it's really such an important part of our development and, and of our education uh, to really calibrate our moral compass uh, and to make us into great men and great leaders, not just educated men and educated leaders. St. Marceline Champagne said, I cannot see a child without wanting to tell them how much God loves them. The Marist brothers exemplify this as they spread the word of God's love throughout every fiber of Columbus. Some of the brothers that are still here, Brother Kevin and Brother Sheehan, um, you know, I would do anything for those guys because they were just so fantastic to me and were such a big part of my life during a critical time when you're growing up. Columbus really enhanced my spirituality. It taught me a lot about how God is so important in my life. It's not exclusively for the economically endowed, it's not exclusively for the intellectually elite, but there is a place for a young man here at Columbus 
uh, regardless and we will work with that individual as best as we can to make sure that they have Catholic education and uh, go out into life and have the tools and the means to succeed. It's, it's a mission the Marist Brothers have and uh, I love it, I love it. An extension of the teachings of the Marist Brothers is the outreach opportunity that Columbus provides through the campus ministry program. And what I really take most from the school, you know, looking back on it 20 years later, uh, was the campus ministry program. The fact that, uh, you know, it, it really created uh, a spiritual foundation for me that I've been able to use throughout my whole life. When I was here in religion, we had a thing called Project Concern. There was a place in South Miami called the After School House. And they were young kids that had gotten out of school, but they had working parents. So we would work and read with them. The other one that I did my senior year was working with a family, a, a woman and her husband. Her husband was, was an invalid. They were Jews that had escaped the Holocaust, and we were there to help her take care of him. And all of that was because the brothers had us do these missions. Education is not enough if it simply teaches you how to make a living. You have to know how to make a life, and that's called virtue, and that is very important in our spiritual program. St. Marcel would be very proud of the work and the mission that is being carried on at Christopher Columbus High School. As the students pass through these halls and enter life beyond Columbus, the camaraderie, the loyalty, the brotherhood never fades. St. Marcel and Champagne, pray for us. Name the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. When you step in here, you're just joining a brotherhood for life. Columbus has a, a, a camaraderie that doesn't need words to be spoken. It was a lot of fun. We had, we had a great time here. The, the bonds that we established between uh, my classmates, those are bonds that, that last forever. We cleaned the parking lot a lot. We washed all the windows. Some of my best friends I met on Sundays washing windows. Over the last 50 years, Christopher Columbus High School has grown in enrollment, expanded with new facilities, and progressed in technology. Columbus is consistently chosen as one of the top 50 Catholic high schools in the nation. There's an atmosphere at Columbus High School where uh, I've always enjoyed the academic freedom. And we've, we've been allowed to do some things that you couldn't do in other school systems. The computer science department at Columbus has changed dramatically in the 31 years that I'm here at Columbus. We started in 1977-78 and we were the first high school to have a computer science department. We started with the Data General Nova 3 mini computer and teletype machines with paper tape. And we have now come to the Moss Technology Center, which is like the Taj Mahal of computers. I started asking the fellows to bring me back pennants from the colleges and universities that they attended. So many of them come back, they send them by mail or they actually deliver them when they show up here and visit. So my room is uh, ring around the ceiling with uh, all kinds of pennants from Miami-Dade to Notre Dame. Columbus High School, hands down, no doubt, no question, the best place in the world to go to school. And therefore, it's the best place in the world to work. There's something about this school, there's no frame of reference anywhere else like Columbus High School. Columbus has been and will continue to be more than a school. It's a family, and it begins with the faculty, all feeling the pull, the warmth of coming home to Columbus. Uh, when it came time to graduate, and I knew I was going into education, I couldn't think of any place I would have wanted to be than right back here at Columbus. And luckily, I was given an opportunity to do that. I came answering an ad for a job as a biology teacher, and instead what I found was a family and a home, and that's what keeps me coming back. My teaching career began in, in my hometown, which is Baltimore, Maryland. And after college, I went back to Baltimore and I started teaching inner city middle school. And it was quite an experience and I was really enjoying it. But there was uh, one job that I would leave that challenging position for, and that was uh, to teach at Columbus High School. And it's that feeling of family, of belonging, that makes Columbus unique to its students and alumni. When I come back here and I walk the halls of Columbus, it's like coming home. Columbus is more than a school. You know, it's, um, it's about family to me. 
The teachers, the brothers and the staff, they're very good with the students. They're always helping academically, they're very challenging. But at the same time, if you ever need a friend, they'll always be there for you. Like any family, the future of Columbus builds on its past, on the memories over the years, the stories woven throughout time. There are legends and stories that have survived the years. Those that were there remember. One of the legends that endures is Brother Kevin Handyboat. Well, when I was the Dean of Discipline, uh, I had a mirror from my office into the classroom. I could see from my office, but the kids couldn't see me. So when they were in detention, I could see who was fooling around and I would go in and they would all always wonder. And they found out that they called it the shark tank. And I remember one year when I had the nickname the shark, uh, a group of kids got together and they, they got a dead shark and they hung it from the top of the A building on a rope and it was dangling outside my office. It's an interesting experience having Brother Kevin being the Dean of Discipline when I was a student. So of course you were uh, deathly afraid of him uh, as he would show up down the hall or walking down around the classrooms. Uh, now you're equally as deathly afraid of him when he shows up looking for your wallet. First by the name of Pat Bell who's done a lot in school. Uh, we're walking down the hall and he said, oh geez, here comes Brother Kevin, he's going, he's going to ask for something. And so we go walking by and Brother Kevin didn't look up or look at Pat and so Pat says, Gosh, I wonder what I did wrong. I said, uh, I wonder if he doesn't like me anymore. So if, if Brother Kevin sees you and doesn't ask for money, uh, you know something's wrong. <laughs> and uh, I was class president in 1989, and we did the first night pep rally in the history of Columbus. And there was a great picture front and center in that yearbook that year. It was Brother Kevin's first year as principal. And we have a picture of him getting pretty low in a limbo. And, uh, you know, that's a scary sight, but one that I remember well. Excellence in athletics has always been a source of pride for the Christopher Columbus explorers. And the memories, the accomplishments, are the stuff that dreams are made of. Dreams that came true. I remember uh, driving to, to the basket and there was a guy standing there about 6'5", and so I pulled up and I, there was nobody else around. And one of the cardinal things with Brother Kevin was you don't shoot the ball unless there's somebody underneath that can get the rebound. And so I pulled up. And I, you know, I started, you know, shooting the ball, and, I, and the only thing you could hear, I, I heard this, you know, throughout the crowd, Jimenez, and I shot the ball anyway, and then I went and swished it, and then I looked at him, he, he sat down. When you think back of traditions that we've had, it was the fellows who came here in the '60s, early '60s that laid the foundations for the football team, the basketball team, and so forth. And they certainly didn't have the facilities that our kids have today. I mean, they had to put the grass down themselves years ago. I remember Dick Pollock taking the phys ed classes, and that's how the, the field was sodded. The football field was uh, planted. It used to be a great big open field that had wolves and coyotes living on it and the football practice field was where Coral Park is located today and a lot of us wanted to get to football practice, we would hitchhike uh, with our full football uniforms on down to Coral Park to the cow pasture and uh, play football, hitchhike back. The team of 82, Mike Schuler, Alonzo Heisman, Tim Plummer, Jim O'Neill and so many others, I mean, that was a great win to get us to the state championship. Uh, we were uh, down in the game by eight points with under a minute to go and we were very near Vero Beach's goal line and our quarterback Mike Shula who I graduated with had just gotten sacked and his mind was elsewhere and as we called timeout and called the next play Mike thought it was fourth down as we were on the goal line and it was actually first down with about eight yards to go so on the next play as he was scrambling that was a pass play and he was scrambling. He was about to get tackled near the right sideline. He accidentally fumbled the ball forward into the goal area, across the goal line. And I happened to be the player standing there and jumped on the ball, recovered the fumble for us to be down two points 
and then we made the two-point conversion to tie the game. It's probably one of the more famous high school football plays in the history of the state of Florida. Um, that got us to the overtime where we won the game in overtime and then went on to the state finals. And those legends, those that were influential to others, whether they knew it at the time or not, made a difference and catapulted Columbus into the next 50 years of success. But when I think back of the early teachers at the school, Brother Ben, the first principal, and then when I came down in 1966, we had Brother Leo, who was the principal of the school, lay people like uh, Dick Pollock, who I always refer to as Mr. Columbus, Mr. John Miller, who was here for years, Bob Munley, Dave Goodman, and uh, a lady that worked in the office for many, many years, uh, M.F. Fleming and Kay O'Brien, and of course, Pat Bigsby, who was still here, along with many others. The first football coach was a fellow by the name of uh, Pete Aiello. These were the people, along with the students who were there, that have set really the framework for what has gone on at Columbus over the 50 years. And those who were recognized during their time at Columbus. I went to Tallahassee uh, to pick up the trophy for the outstanding teenager of Florida with Brother Leo, who was the principal then, Brother Leo Francis, and with my family. And we were all just, uh, you know, we couldn't pinch ourselves to, to know that I was going to be elected, that I was going to be chosen as the, as the state winner. And when we get to the Capitol, I see all these TV stations there, CBS, ABC, NBC, and, uh, and uh, I said, what's going on here? And Governor Claude Kirk steps out and says, uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, you are not just the state winner, you have been chosen as the national winner. And uh, then a few weeks later, I get a, uh, a letter from the White House, inviting me to the White House. Uh, former President Lyndon Johnson invited me to his ranch in Texas for the Thanksgiving holidays. It was an, an, an incredible experience for me. To those we recognize today who continue to make a difference in our community. They are our colleagues, our partners, our leaders, our friends. They are our Columbus brothers. As you go around the community, you notice all the people from Columbus that have made a difference. As you know, anybody associated with Columbus knows, OB is still here. He's been here now going on, I don't know, 150 years. And he's, he's one of my best friends and colleagues. And together, OB and I started the Castaways Against Cancer, which is the group through which we raise money for cancer research. And we paddle from uh, Miami to Key West every summer. Manny Diaz is a Belen graduate, and I worked for Manny Diaz as a city manager for a while. And, um, and he kept telling me how, about how great uh, Belen was, but then I noticed that all his employees, everybody working for him was Columbus people. The big turning point in, in Columbus, when it really took off, was when it invited the alumnus to start a school board to help run the school, uh, work with the Marist Brothers. In their communities throughout the world, Columbus graduates are everywhere continuing to learn, continuing to lead, continuing to serve. I find explorers in every corner of this county, and even when I travel um, nationally. And there's not any place I've traveled all over the world that I can't go that I can run into a Columbus student, including Moscow, uh, Rio de Janeiro, in the middle of the Amazon and Man Manaus in Brazil, come out of the jungle, there's one of our students, Dr. Burris, how you doing? What are you doing here? Oh, I'm on a travel, I'm, doing, I'm on an expedition, I'm here doing research. What are you doing here? Oh, just traveling, trying to find out about the country. And uh, so there are Columbus students everywhere. Columbus alumni recognize that among the progress and the growth, there remains a continuity that brings the past into the present. If you're an explorer, you're an explorer for life. It's just a certain mentality that never leaves uh, the Columbus boy that becomes then the Columbus man. I'm proud to be from the first graduating class and to know that there were 49 classes after me, it's, it's really, really something. You know, you leave the school, but you never leave. And I think that's the greatest mark of Columbus. Um, you know, we've really never left. 
The next 50 years are based in great part on the foundation built during the past 50 years. The families who long for the legacies to continue, the alumni who have continued the traditions and who are passing those traditions to their children, to their futures. We're basically a Marist family. My dad graduated in 1958 from the Marist Brothers in Cuba. I graduated in 1984 here from Columbus and my two uh, kids graduated in 2008. Columbus is a legacy. And more than a legacy, it's a way of life. I have a six-year-old and a five-year-old Ralphie and it's my dream that uh, when Ralphie's old enough he'll be able to to walk the halls of Columbus and be an explorer like, like I was. Jo Joey's a great kid we, and we felt that this was the best place to form him. And, and more importantly the impact it had on my late father because I remember my first day of school as a freshman here which was a short day a couple hours he stayed in the parking lot and and that is also part of our family lore and family history. The importance it had for him to be able to send his children to Christopher Columbus High School. And as I'm sending my son here now, I have the same amount of pride that I'm sure he had when, when we came here. You know, me and my brothers can continue with our families and we'll look back at this 10, 15 years from now and have a lot of pride over what Columbus did for, for our kids. Columbus is so much to so many. Caring. Welcoming. Vehicle. Columbus is complete. Columbus is a family. Congratulations, Christopher Columbus High School. It's been a wonderful 50 years, filled with love and learning, struggles and triumphs, accomplishments and successes. So you've come a long way since that time, and I think the brothers have done a tremendous job in Columbus down the years in, in, in bringing about the great school you have today. It's a pleasure and an honor to congratulate the present staff and administration of Christopher Columbus and to all who have gone before. Their efforts have succeeded in making Columbus a beacon of Catholic secondary education in the United States. Columbus, 50 years, and I know there's 50 more to go. Thank you so much for doing so much for so many of us. I want to thank Columbus for the 50 years, and I want to congratulate everybody here, particularly Brother Sheehan, who's also celebrating his 50th anniversary as a brother. Congratulations, Columbus and the next 50 years will be better than the first 50. And I still miss the wonderful brothers, teachers, students, and special spirit at Columbus. Congratulations on this special anniversary. Hola Miami, and greetings from Chicago. I want to wish you, Brother Kevin, and all the explorers, congratulations on your 50 years exploring. Adelante. There's no way that we can ever say thank you enough. So it's really 50 years of congratulations to our alumni, to our parents, and also to the Maris brothers and the teachers who have dedicated their lives and the other people who have worked at the school from our secretarial staff to our maintenance staff for all the time, energy that they have put in to making this the wonderful, safe, caring school that Columbus is. And here's to many more years to come. Adelante. 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 Adelante.